You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. One more time. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. Believe in you, believe in you, for your faithful love to me. You have been my help in times of me. Lord, unto you will I cleave. You are the rock of my salvation you are the strength of my life you are my hope and my inspiration Lord unto you will I cry I believe in you I believe in you for your faithful love to me, you have been my help in times of need. Lord, unto you will I cleave. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. So he is our inspiration. Right? Every day of this new year, may God continue to be our inspiration. Right? Let him be the one who prompts us to take our quiet times. Let him be the one who prompts us into the new directions that he wants us to take. And let him be the one who guides us to the right people who are in need. Right? Sing the song, Take Me Past the Outer Court. Take me past the outer court Through the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people Priest to sing your praise Hunger and thirst for your righteousness Only found one place Take me into the holy of holy Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holy Take the cold Cleanse my lips, here I am. Take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take me past the outer cold, to the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face, pass me by the crowds of people. Priests who sing your praise Hunger and thirst for your righteousness And it's only found one place Take me into the holy of holy Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holy Take the cold Cleanse my lips, here I am. Take the cold, cleanse my lips, here I am. Take the cold, cleanse my lips, 
here I am. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we enter into the most holy place, we pray that you would cleanse our unworthy lips, our hearts, cleanse us afresh this evening, O Lord, that we may receive your word. Help us, O Lord, to understand your word and to apply it in our lives daily, that this year would become a meaningful year in our lives. And there will be so much to thank God for as we reflect upon what God has done for us this year. And help us to start this year with a focus on what God has planned for us in advance. God has planned for us ministry that we have not assumed, we have not guessed, O Lord Father. What God can do in each one of us and through each one of us this year. When we surrender ourselves completely to the will of the Holy Spirit, pray and commit ourselves completely into your hands. Lord, lead us to people who are in need, who are thirsting and hunger for you, thirsting and hunger, hungering for your presence in their lives. Help us, O oh Lord, to be witnesses, powerful, where you have placed us, in our campuses, in our classes, through our character, through the way that we speak, through the way that we behave, so the way that we dress, help us to be witnesses to those who are around us. We commit ourselves afresh into your hands this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so welcome back and let's go into today's study. We've been looking at the nature of God all this uh, last few months of uh, 2023 and we saw how God is triune and uh, we serve one God but we serve a God who reveals himself as one in three and three in one. And then we also saw the person of the Father, the person of the Son and uh, the person of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to focus on the, the book that reveals to us this God. Why do we believe this book? What is so great about the Bible that we believe that the Bible, all the things that the Bible tells us about God, how can we believe it? What is it about this book that we call scripture that is so unique that we put our trust in him? Everything that we know about Jesus, apart from history, we find in this book, right? Historically, he's a real person. But the evidence of Jesus being a historical person outside of the Bible is very less. It is there, but it is very, very less. But the impact of Jesus as a historical person, we see here in, in every area of, of mankind's development. You know? We see his influence in literature. We see his influence in science. We see his influence in philosophy. We see his influence in theology. We see it you know, in, in the lives of people, we see it in the changed lives of people. So, what is it about the Bible? It has proven itself, it has, uh, you know, it has proven itself beyond time that this is a reliable book. So, we're going to look at what is it that we believe and what makes the Bible a real, reliable source that reveals the person of God to us. Okay. So, I want you to turn first to 2 Timothy, that's going to be our key verse today. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17. Right? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, this is something that we prayed for today, that we would be equipped for every good work that God has planned for us. Okay, let me just disable the waiting room. Okay, Nathania is joining us. Let's welcome her. All right, good evening, Nathania. Can you hear us? Hello, Nathania, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. 
So, happy new year. Happy new year. And welcome. How was your last year? Was it eventful? Was it good? Was it bad? It was uh, really eventful because after the first time after Corona, I got out and uh, started attending college and all. So, it was a good year overall. Very good. Okay. So, can you uh, recollect one thing that uh, you can thank God for last year? Um, probably my admission to college. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, may God bless you with a wonderful new year ahead. Right? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, we were all recollecting one, one things that happened last year and, you know, amazing things we were able to share. So, the great to hear your testimony too. Right? So, today we are focusing on the Bible and we are thinking about what makes this book so reliable. How can we trust the Bible? It is the source of everything that we believe. The Bible teaches us that God is triune. The Bible teaches us that there is a Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And we studied about these people, these characters, these personalities from the Bible. So how can we really trust the Bible? So it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And four things he says, is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that was our prayer this evening, that this year, 2024, would be a year when God would do great works through us, good works through each one of us. But if we have to be prepared for these good works, we must be thoroughly equipped. So if God wants to equip us, he has to use all scripture. You know? So we have to be ready by being uh, you know, people who are faithfully studying the word of God. So then scripture is going to help us. The inspiration of the scripture, the one who inspired the scriptures, that is God, will inspire us from the scriptures by teaching us doctrine. Doctrine is another word for teaching only. Okay? For teaching, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. Four things that will help us to become complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work that God has planned for us. So, let's start with the title. Okay, we call it the Bible. Okay, the word Bible, it does not come from this text itself. It does not come anywhere. Bible doesn't call itself the Bible. It comes from the Greek word biblios. Okay, what does biblios mean? Biblios simply means book or collection of books okay uh, so we call collection of books a library you know? so a library of books is what biblios is already okay so um, bible is the collection of books there are 66 books in the bible you will find 39 in the old testament and 27 in the new everybody knows that right but one thing that we don't know is um, the Bible calls itself many names. Okay, The books that are written in the Bible, they give itself different names. Like for example, turn with me to Mark chapter 12 and verse 26. Mark chapter 12 and verse 26. So you have to find out and tell me, what does the Bible call itself in this text? Okay, Mark chapter 12, verse 26. Okay, but concerning the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses in the burning bush passage how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. What does the Bible call itself? The book, the book of, of Moses. The book of Moses. Okay, the book of Moses. It's actually referring to the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, where in the book of Exodus, God meets with Moses face to face in the burning bush. So, it uh, calls itself the book of Moses. Okay, Scripture calls itself the book of Moses. Again, Luke chapter 3 and verse 4. Luke chapter 3 and verse 4. <clears throat> okay, can you find out what is the title given to the Bible in that? As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. Okay. Book of the words of Isaiah the prophets or the book of the prophets is something that the Bible calls itself. Again, another reference, Luke chapter 4 and verse 17. 
Luke chapter 4 and verse 17. Scroll of the prophet Isaiah. The scroll or the book of the prophet Isaiah. You know, earlier times, we didn't have pages like this. They used to actually uh, make either the dried skin of animals or papyrus uh, plant. You know, that it actually was a plant that grew in the water. They would take the stem of that plant, dry it, flatten it, you know, and then write on it. Okay. So those were the, uh, the from that only we got, from the papyrus only we got this word paper. Okay. Later on when they took the paper, it was actually derived from papyrus. So uh, the general idea is that uh, God uh, calls this book, you know, inspired book of uh, the Bible, it's called the book of the prophets or the book of the prophet Isaiah, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Again, turn with me to Acts chapter 7 and verse 42. Acts chapter 7 and verse 42. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as it is written in the book of the prophets. Okay, The book of the prophets. Again, the title that is given to the Bible is the book of prophets. Why it is called the book of, book of prophets? Because there are so many prophecies that are uttered in the Bible. So many people say so many things about the future. And it has, most of them have come true. And there is so much yet to come true. But we believe that the Bible is a prophetic book. It's a book of the prophets. Then, let's turn to Luke chapter 20 and verse 42. Luke chapter 20 and verse 42. Right? Anyone? Now, David himself said in the book of Psalms. Okay? Book of Psalms. Now, why is this mentioned as the book of Psalms? Now, the book of Moses, the first five books plus all the historical books okay, were actually clubbed together into one book. And that was what they used to call the Torah. Okay? The first five books and all the historical books, uh, you know, they, they clubbed together and they were calling it as one book. That is book number one was the Torah. Then the book of the Psalms, which contained all the poetical books, which they used for singing in worship and all those things. They, that, that was the second book, was the book of the Psalms. And the third book that they used was the book of the prophets. Okay, So these three books, Torah, the book of the Psalms and the book of the prophets, were together called the Old Testament scriptures. All the, it contained the entire uh, revelation of God. Okay, So this was the complete book. The historical books the book of the Psalms and the uh, prophets, book of the prophets. Okay, So these three big, uh, what do you call, sets of scrolls were used in the temple. They would read the Old Testament, they would read the Psalms and sing the Psalms, and they would also hear from the prophets. Okay, So these, these were then explained by the religious teachers. So when, by the time, Jesus' time came, these three books were still in, in action, it was still being used. But by the time the, uh, the printing press came forward, all these three books, the, uh, uh, the Old Testament uh, books were all compiled into one book, as we call it the section, the Old Testament. Then by the time the uh, apostles' uh, time was over, the New Testament also came to be, and they were clubbed together, and the New Testament was also bound together with the Old and the New. So the Torah and the New Testament together, we call it the complete Bible. Now, in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 10, the entire Old Testament is called the book of the law. Okay, book of Moses or the book of the law. Galatians, chapter 3, and verse 10. Galatians 3, and verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is anyone who does not continue in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. See, the book of the law. Okay, So the book of Moses, book of prophets, book of David, the Psalms and the book of the law. So the collection of this together we call it the Holy Bible or the Bible. Now why is it called the Holy Bible? 
the bible does not call itself the holy bible but most of the bibles if you look at the first page you will see that it's already given there it's the holy bible it is a practice that has been used from the time of uh, you know uh, the uh, the greek uh, you know uh, septuagint when it was clubbed when it was bound together it was named as the holy bible what does the word holy mean the word holy means separated okay that's what that word holy literally means separated now if you're using vessels in the uh, in the church uh, for communion we call it the holy communion and we we use these vessels only for the holy communion right only for communion now those are separated for that particular use so when anything is separated for a specific use we call it holy so the term holy just means separated it's a very good word to describe the book this collection of books holy is a very good term to describe this collection of books why because it is a separated book it is not like the other books it is not like a collection of just a collection of books okay it's a it has the ability to lead us to a holy god the bible has the ability to lead us to a holy god that is why it is called a holy bible okay it's called a holy book because it can lead us to a holy god now uh the bible is a holy book also because when you compare all of the books that man has okay the, that man has written and all that and you compare it with bible you'll find that the bible sits separate it is unique it cannot be compared to any other writings of any other man right it's a holy book because it is it is in sharp contrast to all this now basically if i am going to write a book about uh, say a great person of history i would always try to show that person's positive qualities only i would not like to mention his negative qualities and even if i am mentioning any of the negative qualities because he is my hero i would justify his wrong doing as a right thing or you know i would say that this is a circumstance that led him to this it was not his fault you know because i want to portray my hero in a good light but the bible is a unique book because it gives you the negative sides of all the people that it mentions as great men of god okay people like abraham people like adam people like david even though they were great men of god their faults and their stumblings and their fallings everything is clearly mentioned in the bible it does not give any consideration to any person in that respect even jesus is portrayed with uh, with uh, you know remarkable accuracy because they, they they don't show jesus as a superhuman when it comes to the garden of gethsemane or the cross no they show jesus in all his weakness all his humility all his despair even him crying and praying and all those things you know and that's what the bible is very unique it contrasts with all other books that are written by men it does not uh, you know uh, uh, make superhuman characters out of any of the good men that the bible mentions about okay none of these people are mentioned in such a good light that you know none of their bad things are hidden it is all revealed so bible is a holy book because it it contrasts with all other books that are written by men then the people who wrote the bible were also holy men separated men holy men of god is what wrote it let, let me let me show you that second peter chapter 1 okay second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 okay i'm going to ask uh, whom should i ask nevin nevin can you read it second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 mm. and knowing this first of all hmm. that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation hmm. for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man hmm. but men spoke from god as they were carried along by the holy spirit okay so that verse actually reads <laughs> your translation is yes we are yes yes okay the, or, the uh, actual translation is the holy men of god okay the holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit okay 
why 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 are they called holy men not because they are holy in a superficial sense because they are men who were separated for god's purpose they are the ones through whom god spoke this okay you'll find that word there in the uh, you know footnote okay that uh, verse can also be translated as holy men of god so it is a holy book because holy men of god were the human writers right so and another reason why it is a holy book is because Peter, Second Peter says the same verse says it was inspired by, uh, you know, spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Inspiration means being moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, when I was listening to you know music directors, they actually have this thing. They say, okay, I did not copy a Western tune. Okay, I did not copy this music from that guy's music. I actually was inspired by that. Now, what is in their language? Inspiration is a wrong word because. they pull the same tune you know from somebody else's album and they use it for their own song and they they don't want to give credit for that but they, that's like that's called plagiarism which means they are copying okay they are outright copying a portion of the songs and they're using that same music for their songs which is actually wrong without permission you can't do that without proper copyright you know you can't do that so the the original person you know that person will take them to court and they will sue them right but here we see that inspiration is something different when the bible defines it bible defines uh, you know inspiration as being moved by the holy spirit which means that you know, example is like peter wrote this right peter is a fisherman being a fisherman he is not well learned okay? he has not gone to uh, study theology he has not gone to study uh, you know uh, higher studies in greek he is not well qualified as a writer paul is paul is trained in um, you know theology paul is trained in language and all that but peter is not well educated but he is using greek to write his text the same greek that he uses in the marketplace peter is using to write his episodes now what happens is the I, the talent that peter has the gift that peter has for this language the ability that peter has for speaking greek language is used by the holy spirit to give god's word through this man peter so peter speaks on behalf of the holy spirit peter speaks from his experience peter f- speaks from his language his skills his gifts everything is peter's but it's being used by the holy spirit to bring out the word of god okay so that is what inspiration means inspiration means being moved by the holy spirit the same text that peter is writing to his audience is being used by god to reveal god's word to the people okay so uh, peter doesn't have to go to college theological college you know and study theology to write this god has already taught him god has given him the experience god has given him the the experience of walking with jesus and hearing him speak directly to him and he's using all that and making him write the text of the scripture and as peter peter writes it you know it's like a paul was writing to uh, say a group called corinthians so the church in corinth that asked a question to paul what should we do about these things and paul was writing a reply to them but as paul is writing does he know that he's writing scripture yes but is he writing it as though it is scripture no it is he's writing a reply to the letter that has been sent to him but as he's writing it he knows that the holy spirit is using him to write scripture okay peter also says uh, at the end of his uh, session you say come to second peter um, chapter 3 and uh, verse 14 onwards okay second peter chapter 3 was 14 onwards therefore beloved looking forward to these things be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless and consider that the long suffering of our lord is salvation as also our beloved brother paul according to the wisdom given to him has written to you as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction okay so what he's saying is that paul has written to you right some of these things that paul has written very little a little difficult to understand and some people would like to twist it because paul's writing is sometimes hard so they can twist it they can modify it 
according to their like but that actually deviant people not good people bad people twist it okay then he says as they do also the rest of the scriptures so what is peter doing peter is saying that what paul has written is scriptures see paul wrote to you he wrote letters to you but peter is calling them scriptures so did they know that they were writing scriptures yes they knew that holy spirit was giving them the revelation that was needed to communicate god's word to these people so apostles themselves identified that the holy spirit is inspiring them to write scripture okay so that's what it means so they were holy people and they were used by the holy spirit to write these texts so it is also a holy book because it tells us you know uh, how sinful man may approach a holy god you know there's nothing that is similar between god and us because we have broken the trust and we have completely alienated him from us sin has really separated god from man and if man sinful man has to approach a holy god how can we do it you know and if we have to go towards god and we have to be made holy how can that be possible that's what scripture is trying to tell us so it's a holy book because it tells us how to approach a holy god and to become holy ourselves what should we do right so these are things that the bible reveals to us now the bible is also like in this passage it is called the scriptures what does scriptures mean scriptures the word literally means writings okay scripture means writings means the written nature of the word of god now why why would it specify scripture as the written word of god because the tradition was passing on scripture as oral okay if you look at the old testament god spoke to moses moses spoke to the people but then after that event is over moses sat down and wrote what he spoke what god spoke to him and what he spoke to the people and how the people responded so that practice of writing down that made it scriptures okay so what you have in your hand is the scriptures which means the written word of god which was initially the spoken word of god the oral tradition was passed on from tradition to tradition from people to people the oral word of god was passed on but then the men of god who sat down and wrote it made it the scriptures okay so moses was the first one uh, to have written about creation but the first book that was ever written in the bible was written most most scholars say that it was job right job was the first book that was ever written but it also speaks about great things like offering sacrifice you know uh, but the procedure of sacrifice came only when moses wrote in the book of exodus you see or leviticus but then it was already been practiced by job years before this book came into existence you see so according to genealogy according to chronology job is maybe the first book that was written it was written years before the pentateuch but the pentateuch was written by moses tradition holds on to that view and joshua of course because the death of moses is also mentioned in the first five books so we assume that it could be joshua also who completed the book but the tradition was always these commands were passed on orally people heard it they spoke it and then they wrote it down as scriptures so the word scripture literally means writings those were oral traditions that were passed on generations and they were written down orally okay otherwise moses would never have known what happened in creation who was there to explain it to him most probably adam would have explained to his you know descendants and that, those descendants would have passed it on to uh, moses and moses would have written it down so the oral tradition was passed on and that was written down once it was written down it was referred to as scriptures which means writings literally it means writings now let's look at the content of scripture okay now we think that the old testament contains uh, you know creation and the uh, selection of one man called abraham and through him one nation called israel and then all the kings that came to israel all those things that that's what the old testament all the prophets that came after him. 
but that's not what the old testament contains that's not what the new testament or new testament contains the gospels new testament contains the epistles new testament also contains the revelation right but combined what does the scriptures actually contain let's look at it matthew chapter 22 and verse 29 okay dan will read it for us matthew chapter 22 and verse 29 what is the content of scripture 29 right yes Yeah, Jesus replied, "You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, like, at the resurrection, people will." Okay, uh, you are mistaken. Not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Which scriptures did Jesus read? Old Testament. The Old Testament, right? He had the book of the prophets. He had the book of the Psalms. and he had the torah right the historical books all together and jesus says you're mistaken who is he talking to he's talking to pharisees he's talking to the sadducees who have come and asked him for a question to the religious folk he's telling that you uh, you're mistaken not knowing the scriptures nor the power of god so a person who knows the scriptures who understand the scriptures can also know what the power of god so the content of the scriptures is that the scriptures contain the power of god okay, what god can do how can god reveal himself to us how can god create how can god forgive what can god do to solve this problems that mankind is facing so it's like a manual for human beings given by whom given by the creator you know like when i bought my automobile it came with a manual it came from you know i bought my vehicle from tata So Tata company gave me a manual saying that okay these are the features of your car these buttons will do this if you have these problems try this as solution you know so the makers of this automobile has instructed me to follow the instructions as per the manual okay all these buttons and gadgets there's a reason for them to be there all those gears and the clutch and the levers all these things have a purpose if you want to know how where and how these things will function you have to follow the manual same way jesus saying the power of god is being revealed through what through the scriptures if you want to know who god is and how powerful he is why man has been created why is the, why is he facing all these problems why is this you know situation coming in my life all these things the bible has an answer for it it is the manual that god has given to mankind okay so it is a user's manual so if i want to know why i am like this i should read the bible if i am to find out why is god like this i do again read the scriptures okay now some people actually tell me that you know it contains the word of god wherever the bible says thus says the lord that portion is the scripture that is the word of god the rest of it like for example jesus went from galilee to capernaum that is not the word of god when a prophet or when jesus says thus says the lord then what follows is the word of god that only is the scripture the rest of it is narrative narrative is not god's word now that leads us into an error okay why because the bible not only contains the word of god but the bible is the word of god i am not saying it okay it is god's word to his creation it is god's letter to mankind so the complete book is the word of god you can't take out bits and pieces of it and say okay from this verse to this verse is god's word this verse to this verse is not like for example the genealogy of jesus is mentioned twice in the bible once in the gospel of matthew and another time in the gospel of luke some people read that passage and they skip that passage because they think it's just a sequence of names why should we read it and they don't read that passage why because that can't be the word of god why would god put a list of names there see but those names have a purpose those words also are god's word it is scripture why because the complete word of god from cover to cover if you look at the bible from genesis to revelation is the word of god it doesn't contain the word of god it is the word of god let me show you romans chapter 10 and verse 17 romans chapter 10 and verse 17 
Okay, Sam, can you read it? Romans 10, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Uh, message is heard? Through the word about Christ. Word of our Christ, huh? The word about Christ. Okay. Which translation is that? NIV. Okay. Right. So, uh, faith comes by hearing and... Uh, so, yeah. And uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read one more verse. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Sometimes the translations can be very funny. <laughs> but it's okay. It's It just conveys the meaning but in a different sense. This is a, These are words that I'm used to. That's why I when I hear something different... I'm a little stuck. Yeah. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, Sam. Oh, me again? Yeah. Okay, Hebrews 4, 12, right? Yeah. For the word of God is active oh. and alive, oh. sharper than any double-edged sword. Oh. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, oh. joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Hmm. Correct. So, the word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword. The word of God is not separating, you know, this is the word of God, that is the word of God. It is a complete word of God. Every word that is in the scripture, that's what we read in the first verse that we read, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, all scripture is God-breathed. Okay, All scripture is God-breathed. There is not a hyphen or a word that is not part of scripture which is already there in the Bible. So everything is God's word. Does not mean that you know we have to uh, you know uh, like uh, memorize only certain parts of scripture. That is up to us. If you want to memorize this passage, that's okay. If you don't want to memorize the names of those people who are the ancestors of Jesus, that's okay. It doesn't matter on that. But understand that it is there because God wants it there. Okay? Now I I see this as real estate. Okay, if this is God's real estate, there is a reason why God allowed certain more number of pages to certain prophets or certain writers and certain less number of pages to certain writers. Okay? God wanted only that much of that person to write in that. So if God wanted Jude to write a small book, he wrote only a small book. James to write only five chapters, he wrote only five chapters. But Isaiah to write 66 chapters, Isaiah wrote 66 chapters. Huge book. It's like a Bible inside the Bible. You know, 66 books in the Bible, 66 chapters in Isaiah. Right? So Isaiah has so much God's word to speak to us. James has only five chapters of God's word to speak to us. But that is God alloc allocating these writings to these people. Okay. So, though, so what does it show? It means that something more is given there. Something of greater importance is given there. You know. That's why we call them, some of the prophets, we call them major prophets and minor prophets. It's not that this lesser, uh, the, uh, the minor prophets are less significant. No. They have something lesser to say. The chapters are less. That's why they call them minor. Only reason is that. But the importance with which they speak is the same. Isaiah, what he speaks, and Amos, what he speaks, both are equally important. Zechariah, what he speaks, and the gospel, what it speaks, equally important. See? So there no nothing that you know one is greater or another is lesser. No. All scripture is God breathed. The whole thing is God's word. First Thessalonians chapter two and verse thirteen. First Thessalonians chapter two and verse thirteen. Yes. For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. You see, so who was speaking this? Paul was speaking to the Thessalonians. And he says, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, they spoke the gospel to them. And these people received the gospel. And what happened? He says, you did not receive it as words from men. But you received it as the word of God, which in truth it is. See, the words that we spoke to you is God's word. See, so the word of God is the entire scriptures. There's no portion that you can take out as saying unimportant, not God's word. No, 
it does not contain the word of god it is the word of god that's the difference now let me end with this because the bible is the word of god it reflects the nature of god okay because the bible is the word of god it reflects the nature of god okay now what do i mean by that i what i mean is that see a person's word and a person's character is synonymous okay it's like saying okay if manchadan said this he will do it okay or if he has promised it then he will do it no that means i am only as good as my word if i give you a word and i don't keep that word then you'll say oh can't trust that guy because he doesn't keep his word okay? so my nature is revealed through the words i speak now if i'm teaching the word of god or if i'm teaching you how to behave and i behave in the opposite way you'll say can't trust this guy because he preaches something which he does not practice you see but a person's word and his nature are synonymous okay that's why we we always say you know don't trust every preacher observe him how is he does he practice what he preach the same way the word of god it is holy and it it expresses or it shows us the character of god the nature of it reflects the nature of god okay so the bible is the word of god and because it is the word of god it reflects the character of the person who has spoken it that is god right so why because a person's character and his word are synonymous okay i'll give you an example and we'll close with that first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 first corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 okay nevin can you read it acha uh, one first corinthians one one, one, one verse 9 yeah um, god is faithful by ah. whom you were called into the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord correct god is faithful who has called you right uh, god is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord so just like how god is faithful his word is faithful okay. god's word if it promises something it will never go back it will always be yes and amen in jesus christ so god is faithful god's word is faithful okay first peter chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 nathania can you read it first peter chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 first peter chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 okay now that you have purified yourselves by obeying oh. the truth so that you have sincere love for each other love one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of god okay to the living and enduring word so just like how god is imperishable his word is also imperishable god is incorruptible his word of god is also incorruptible okay so again one more first peter chapter 1 was 25 dan first peter chapter 1 was 25 but the word of the lord endures forever ha ah. and this is the word that was preached to you okay so here the word of god is eternal okay just like how god is eternal the word of god is also eternal okay so that's the way scripture actually reflects god so god is faithful his word is uh, you know faithful god is incorruptible his word is incorruptible god is eternal his word is eternal okay now when you say god is powerful what would be the word of god again the word of god would be powerful if god is holy then the scriptures are holy if god is creative then his word is also creative psalm 33 verse 6 psalm 33 verse 6 okay psalm Psalm thirty-three, verse six. By the words, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the 
breath of his mouth okay just as god is creative his word is also creative okay so examples are there if god is good then the word is good if god is righteous then the word is righteous if god is true his word is true if god is unchanging his word is unchanging if god is light his word is also light let me stop with that psalm 119 <coughs> psalm 119 verse 105 i think everybody knows it by heart right psalm 119 verse 105 nevin can you read it uh your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path and a light to my path okay so whatever god is his word also is if god is spirit his word is also spirit if god is light his word is also light if god is fire then his word is also fire if god is pure then the word is pure now the bible also says that god is the source of life that means the bible the word of god is also the source of life everything that is true of god is true of his word so we're going to see how it connects to jesus next time right so let's pray and let's thank god for the scriptures it reveals it reflects the nature of god it reveals god to us it shows us what man can do to become holy it shows us how to approach a holy god it reflects the very nature of god let's pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great book that you have given us, the book of all books, the library, the biblios that you have given us, the scriptures that were orally passed down, which were written down for us. Help us to understand that it is an essential part of our lives. And there is not a single day that we cannot draw our inspiration. We cannot stop drawing inspiration from this book, O Lord Father. Every day let it be the most important time of our lives as we spend time reading this word hearing your voice speak to us we pray that the scripture would be an important part of this year in our lives every day we, sh- we would dedicate our oh lord to understanding more of your word more of your word so the character of god the nature of god would be reflected in each one of us if god is light and his light has to be seen by others it has to be seen through me it has to shine out through me the only way it can shine out through me if it is reflected in my life help us o oh lord to read it so much that it would start reflecting through me in jesus precious name we pray amen